Hey everybody, Dana Shove, editor of Civil War Times Magazine with Melissa Wynn, director of photography, and we are back at our next location in Washington, D.C.'s Congressional Cemetery. Before we get to the memorial, though, I would like to introduce you to a young man and also talk about this bumper sticker here you see on the golf cart, I Love Goats, because they also occasionally use goats here as uh, landscape management tools basically to graze down some of the areas and they use them here to great effect. Now come on around here Melissa, I'm going to step around here. This is Quentin everybody. Steve, our guide who's over there, we're going to see it just a second. Steve has a bad knee so Quentin has been driving him around from location to location. We appreciate it. And Quentin's duty station, well first of all, how long have you worked here Quentin? I've been working here since August. Okay. So I've been able to take months. And tell us about the instrument you got there. Oh, it's just a baritone you ukulele. Know, like, you know, once in a while. So it's a baritone ukulele that he and you and you are the you're the gate checker, right? Yes, sir. So his job is to sit at the gate, check people in, and check people out. And if you're lucky, Quentin's going to be on duty because he plays. You want to play us a little bit? You just want to pick a little bit there. That's nice. Mm -hmm. They're really nice. How long have you been playing? Uh, I've been playing guitar for probably five years, but uke, it's more so than since I started working here. Very nice. So another great thing about the cemetery, keep playing, it's great. If you come here, hopefully you'll catch Quentin at the gate playing his ukulele. And if he becomes famous, Melissa and I could say we met you before you became famous and you're on yeah, a late night show or something playing your ukulele, right? So I'll say you were the guy that put me on first. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we helped break Quentin and break his career. Thanks, man. Thanks a lot for helping us out today. Welcome, guys. Okay. So on a walk over here, and we're going to see this tall monument behind me. And this monument is to a tragedy. On June 17, 1864, there was an explosion at the Washington Arsenal. Now, some of you may have heard about the explosion in the Allegheny Arsenal on September 17, 1862. And in fact, our next issue is going to have an article in it by Rich Condon about the Washington, uh, excuse me, the Allegheny Arsenal explosion, which killed like 78 people. So, less than a year later, there was this explosion here at the Washington Arsenal, which was located at Fort McNair, right? Yes. And Steve Hammond, our, our tour guide, is helping us out today. Fort McNair is where the Anacostia and the Potomac River meet, and they were there were women there making cartridges for the muskets. The superintendent, well, I want to get his first name correct, was Thomas Brown. They had also been preparing fireworks for the upcoming Fourth of July celebration, and they had laid these fireworks outside in the sun to dry. It was very hot that day, and they think one of these fireworks cooked on, and it, fu it started the other fireworks exploding. There, were, the, there was a window, it was really hot, and they had opened a window in one of the rooms where the women were working. And unbelievably, a firework shot through that window, literally down the table, where these young women are filling cartridges with gunpowder, setting off the cartridges and then actually exploding a large barrel of gunpowder in the room. Yes. Tremendous explosion. 21 women died. So tell us a little bit more about that. Well, 21 women died and of the 21, I believe only about 15 were identified. In fact, one woman was identified by her shoes because the uh, her neighbors had seen her, the shoes that she wore that day. But, um, and in fact, um, of the 21, 19 are buried here. 19 are buried here, okay. Two are, one is over here and one is down this way. Now, are they with their families? Is that one? They're, we believe they're, they're both with their families, but we aren't sure. I know the one over here, her father predeceased her. Okay. And they buried her there. But there's actually 19 women, and they were... They know who died, but they don't know whose body was who, correct? Right. And the names of the women that died are all listed here on this more recent that your organization 
to the Sons of Union veterans. Oddly enough, that was placed there by the uh, Department of Ireland. Oh my goodness! They actually, we we actually had the come back here Irish Vice President here. So the Department of Ireland Sons of Union veterans. No, it, it's just basically Department of Ireland uh, made the. Put the plaque here. because so many of these women were Irish, Irish, yes, immigrants. Absolutely. You know, it was basically they were recent immigrants to this country of Irish descent, most of them, and of course, you know, working because of the wartime need in this arsenal. Now, this explosion happens, this tremendous, horrible explosion, and Secretary of War Stanton, who's not generally known as being a nice guy, very gruff guy, but immediately. We're going to take care of all of these. It immediately says we're paying for all their funerals. And oddly enough, the what is depicted here is supposedly, you know, when you look at it, the, the trees are hanging over, and that's actually the depiction of the uh, what blew up the explosion. It's kind of eroded, but you can see up there on the monument, you can see the windows. And then that's flame and smoke pouring out of the windows of that building at the Washington Arsenal, depicting the actual horrible, horrific act. Melissa, if you want, we can walk around, if you don't mind. Steve, okay. stay seated, please. We'll walk around so you can see there's names of the women here on the monument. And I will get some, um, so you can see this monument was de dedicated only a month after the actual tragedy. The, the explosion occurred on June 1860, full, no, a year, excuse me, a year, a year ago, a year after the explosion, they dedicated this monument. And here we have more names, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So come back around. And the statue is called Reef. Let's let's uh, let's repeat that here. Steve is telling the, 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 the statue on the on the monument is has a name. It's called Grief, and it was made by uh, Lot Flannery, who is buried. One cemetery over, he's in the uh, the Washington Cemetery. Okay, so the sculptor that did that. So, and the money, do you know where the money was raised? Yes, the, the money was raised. In fact, everybody at the uh, Arsenal worked one day, and they gave the money toward all of that. So, the, this was the they first... They donated a day's yeah, wages. This was the first monument that was ever built in Washington. Paid for by public funds. Wow, and it was paid for by the workers. Wow, that's amazing. And Stanton paid for the interments of yes. all that and the other expenses like the, the caskets and, and the coffins and all that sort of thing. And there was a funeral procession through town, I believe. Yes, absolutely. Supposedly you could not get a cab in D.C. that day. They were all being used for this funeral. When they were brought here to be right. buried here. And Abraham Lincoln walked on this ground. And he was here he, with, he for was, the ceremonies. He was the uh, chief mourner. And I've done extensive research. He did not speak that day while he was here. Was he asked to speak? Do you know? No, he, he was not asked to okay, speak. Okay, so he did not speak. He, did, he, was, he just didn't want to take attention, right? right I guess. Well, you know, it, it's one of those things, you know, that... He chose not to at that time. Right. He didn't want the attention focused on him. He wanted it on these oh, young yeah. women that had sacrificed. And as I said, there was an explosion in Pittsburgh. Dangerous work making cartridges. Oh, yeah. Well, and the the women were making cartridges for Sharps carbines. So the, it was a multiple. You had to put the slug and the powder in which caused issues in trying trying to get that complete. So it was not done easily. Right, so the Sharps was a breech loading. Yes. And the bullet was exposed, 
but below the bullet was a was the tube that held the gunpowder. Gun and so you would drop the breech block on the sharps and slide this round in. So I believe, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, that these women were actually working in what they call the choke room, which is where they attach the bullet to the cartridge. It, they then choke it because they're twisting the top. Yeah. So it doesn't separate. So they're choking, it's called the choking room, where the bullets were choked or attached to these cartridges. Configure each of these women, they have Two, uh, they have a box of cartridges that they're, that they're loading, and the cartridges that they're dealing with. Right. So they yeah. have twice the powder in there. There's a lot of gunpowder in that room, and as they, I also read, as they finished the cartridges, they were piled up in front of them with the bullets facing the workers. And supposedly, one woman was trying to get out of the room as as happens in a situation like this, she was trampled and she was laying underneath two women who were dead, and she was still alive. She so survived. They, Let's go. Uh, uh, hang on one second. Unfortunately, not the police looking for me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, so this woman is trampled, but survives in a macabre way, really, because she's covered up by two other women that were killed. And they think some of these women may actually have been killed when the cartridge exploded and sort of shot the bullet story. Absolutely. Horrible, horrible, horrible accident. Commemorated here at Congressional Cemetery by this very beautiful monument. Let's let the. Uh, and we, we do we are not sure this was ever dedicated because it was, you know, the it was only only a month after Lincoln died. Right. So you, it's really only May or June of 1865. When, and everybody so they're was, buried here, and then they put the monument here late. Yes. And the monument was put here on June 65, and the nation there's such a pall because Lincoln has been assassinated. That they probably you think they didn't have a formal dedication we don't for the think monument. They ever had a okay, so the women are buried, and then the monument's put in a year later. That's really interesting. Fairly interesting stuff. Anybody want to say hello here or mention any comments about the monument? Melissa? Yeah, um, Michael Pellegrini says great information and thanks from Pittsburgh. Um, Pittsburgh. <laughs> yep. Sharita Bittekoffer actually suggests uh, the Gunpowder Girls book about women in uh, yes. arsenal work during Fantastic. the Civil War. Thank yes. You. Mm -hmm. uh, David Carr from uh, Blowing Rock, North Carolina. Hello. Um, Gary Match Martinatus uh, says Hi, these Gary. programs are so interesting and he needs to visit. Oh, yeah. You, uh, really? Yeah. yeah I, I, I do encourage people to come here if you're in DC. It's worth a visit. Mm -hmm. yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And before, while we move on, there is a website for Congressional Cemetery. Yes, uh, and check out their website and you can get more information. And there are Civil War tours here. And Steve leads some of those tours. Or, uh, at least for the... I'm slowly getting away. Slowly getting out of it. He's got problems with his knees. That's why Quentin is helping us today. <laughs> but there will be other Civil War tours. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we had several people comment about Quentin's very, very talented. Did you hear that, Quentin? Yeah. <laughs> I love you. Very talented. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> very right. much so. Okay, folks, we have one more stop with Steve we're going to get to here shortly. And uh, until then, this is Data Show. Steve Hammond, Quentin, and <laughs> Melissa signing off from the Washington Arsenal. Beautiful moving Washington Arsenal Monument here at Congressional Cemetery in Southeast Washington, D.C.